Welcome, everyone. It's an immense privilege, obviously, when, when you're a, a former student to be invited back to your school because it means they're not embarrassed of you. Uh, and, and that's always a good sign. But I'm hoping in today's talk, I'm going to set the bar a little bit higher than ensuring full neck isn't just merely uh, uh, not embarrassed, but actually immensely proud of all of you going forward. Now, uh, I, I want to talk about I want to talk about the things which I wish I knew when I was at Full Neck and also the things I did know, which have helped me so much. Uh, you can see the school crest. Uh, I was born the year after the school was founded, so around 1754, yeah, about, about then. Um, and uh, I can assure you time flies. Uh, it, it still feels like yesterday I was at school. Uh, I was there in the 1980s. Uh, <laughs> which you'll read about in the history books, uh, I'm sure. So let me sort of get right up to what I think and I hope will help you because it helped me and some of these things uh, have not changed. Now, just a little bit again about me. I never realized or thought or dreamt that I would be so fortunate to work with members of the royal family, with uh, give talks around the world on investing in the UK, be on BBC, uh, meet presidents and prime ministers and all the rest of it. My plan when I was at Full Neck was to be a barrister. And uh, two years after leaving Full Neck, whilst I was doing my law degree, uh, my family made sure I got my first job. And my first job was cleaning toilets. And I said to him, why do you want me cleaning toilets as a job? And they said, well, you've been to a private school. You're going to be a barrister. You're probably going to forget Yorkshire and having your feet on the ground. And this job will remind you where you came from. Uh, and so I don't just want to talk about the successes. I want to talk about the journey to get there and what makes. Uh, well, images like this only suggest that it was easy. It wasn't. Uh, and that there's only upside and of course there's lots of upsides but I want to talk about like I said the route map which might hopefully make things a little bit easier for you depending on whatever your definition of success is it may be power wealth fame it may be hopefully making the lives of others that much better through whatever means that is whether you work at the UN or in philanthropy and charity, or whether you go to the city, whatever it is, uh, hopefully by hearing about the experiences of others, you will avoid some of the pitfalls and get to your destination that much quicker and that much more easily. And that's why I think, and that's my goal. And that's why I, for instance, like listening to other people's experiences, because uh, whilst it's important to learn from your own mistakes, it's a hell of a lot easier to look, uh, sorry, a heck of a lot easier to learn from other people's mistakes. Okay, so if I can start off then with that, like I said, I've been immensely privileged. This was not planned. How much of your life will be down to luck? Would I would say is probably gonna be around 90%. So do not look at somebody else's life and think, wow, I, I, I like that. I like this, this guy hangs around at a lot of beaches or he gets to work at number 10 and, and, and work with government and, and whatever, get, get to be on to have his own TV show. It often doesn't work out like that. There is a large element of luck. Do not beat yourself up about it. Do not look on enviously at somebody else's good fortune, which may be portrayed as skill. Everyone likes to think, oh, well, I have all of this because I'm immensely skilled and talented. It's not. There is an element of that. Of course, there is got to be an element of skill and hard work and industry. There's a large element of luck. So I'll talk a bit about how to put ourselves in a position to be lucky, to get lucky, because the worst thing in the world is you have hidden talents, you have abilities, and they're not recognized, they're not fulfilled. You don't achieve your potentials. How do we make sure we put ourselves in a position to be lucky as well? And that's important. Um, in a summary, Ethan did a fantastic job, but just so uh, you know, so I'm one of the government's deal makers. I run a business as well. I have what's called a private equity fund. It's asset management, but basically it makes rich people richer, but we do something more useful than that. We take that money and do good things with it, which I'll come to. Uh, but for the UK government, I'm one of the government's deal makers. My job is to find outstanding technologies which solve the world's biggest problems and bring them to the United Kingdom. 
so that Britain benefit uh, that we get, create more jobs, uh, solve some of the problems around climate change, global poverty, uh, uh, problems around the environment and so on and so forth. So anyway, I thought I'd just show this because, uh, again, it can be misunderstood. Most of my time, uh, and I can assure you at 2 a.m. today, so Ethan, if you do follow me on Twitter and you said you might, well, at 2 a.m., if you see me tweeting, it's probably because I'm doing this. I'll be working. Okay, so I do not want you to think or have it underestimated, certainly in the social media age where everything seems as if everybody's successful uh, and it's easy for everyone. And my wife complains about this. She's in her she's in her thirties and she says, "How come everybody else's life looks so easy?" Uh, uh, so do not be put off by that. There is a lot of hard work which goes into it, but it my God, it's worth it. Uh, so I want to start off with this. Okay, um, for me. The days at school, I worked out very quickly. For every day or hour or minute I would spend at school working, I knew it was going to be worth 10 times as many hours 10 years from then. And I've got friends who verified it. I've got friends who were not necessarily working as hard when they should have been. I'm, I'm, there's, a, there's a time to have fun. Of course there is. But when there was work to be done and studies to be completed, who perhaps didn't push themselves as much and they said to me 10 years later because I told them when I was at full neck trust me I've got a formula and I think the formula is every minute at school is worth 10 minutes or 10 hours when you're older and life will be easier as a result of the time spent working at school and I stand by that uh, I guess to put it in more impactful terms which hopefully will resonate with you and I have an image of this it's on my wall you can't see it it's behind the camera and I I'm reminded of this to this day, and it does help me get through a heck of a lot. It's, it's just simply true. People don't see the sweat, the tears behind the scenes, and I'm sure and I hope a lot of you will relate to it. Uh, I joined Full Neck when I was 13. I was two years behind for joining the senior school. I was two years behind when I started uh, learning German at Full Neck. Every night at 10 p.m., when well on the nights we had German homework I would have to look and translate every single word uh, and go through it and those essays would take me two or three hours I would cry okay I would cry at the thought of it and I remember saying to my grandmother this is difficult and she said to me I was raised by my my grandmother my uncles and aunts my parents were in India at the time and she said show courage I was 13, and you might think, wait a minute, that's a bit harsh to tell a 13 year old. It's not, it is difficult. I know it's difficult. Uh, three years later, I won the German prize. That training at school, that builds character for the rest of your life. They say giving up is dangerous because it becomes a habit. Don't let it become a habit. Whatever you do, for your own sake, for your own sake, not just the sake of your community, your society, your country, you might think we're too young to think about our country. A little history will tell you you're not too young when you're at school to think about your country. Your school will tell you you're not too young to think about your country. For me, that had made a massive difference, that character building which happened at school. Uh, I would do German in the lunch hour because the teacher was good enough to teach me during the lunch hour because he knew I was two years behind. Winning at school, I still delve into to this day. I'm in my 40s now, late 40s. And I delve into that spirit when times are tough to know, wait a minute, if I could do this as a child at 13, if I could start that behind, my first set of exam results, 25% in uh, biology. Uh, it was... 10% in physics. Uh, my highest mark was 48% in history. I got the prize for best performance at then was O levels, the year before GCSEs and at A levels and topped the exams three years later. That didn't come by luck. It came through determination. Whatever happens in your formative years at school will stay with you for the rest of your life. The character you decide to be the strength of character you decide you're going to be will all stay with you. However, don't forget to have fun. To this day, 
people will often say to me, oh, yeah, I remember you at school. You used to just be you know, in the library or you used to be you know, just at home working all the time. Uh, I didn't have pushy parents. I'm Indian and I might be the only Indian who never had pushy parents. Uh, they never, or my grandma, nobody pushed me. I didn't need to be pushed. I hope you won't need to be pushed either. Uh, yes, there's a time to have fun. And my parents actually, if anything, they ever used to say to me, say, why you got enough some fun? You seem to be doing a bit too much of, uh, <laughs> of working. Uh, do, of course, I appreciate you're young. It doesn't matter whether you're young or old. You should be having fun for the rest of your life. My work, I consider fun. To this day, my wife will ask me, she will say, why do you work so hard? And I say, it's not work, it's fun. Please try and find a career or a line of work which will be like fun. The old saying goes, if you find a line of work which is fun, you will never work a day in your life. Do try and find that when you're considering careers. I have mentioned hard work, persistence, late nights, they stay. Let me talk about rejection. Thankfully, and by God's grace, I hope none of you ever have any rejections in your life. It's not realistic. I had a hundred letters of rejection from various various barristers' chambers. I had two acceptances, 100 letters of rejection. Well, my first book, and you can see there's a whole bunch of my books over my shoulder. My first book, I had 23 publishers who rejected me. It was the 23rd one who said, go uh, approach the Financial Times, which was the 24th one, and they said yes. The, the difference between winning and losing is the for the people who win, rejection doesn't phase them, so what? I'd get the letters in the morning, I'd see it, I knew it was gonna be a rejection letter, I'd say fine, that's one more that I don't need to worry about writing to. They said no. Uh, of course I'd analyze and work out, am I doing something wrong? How do I amend this? How do I change this? Rejection can make you stronger. Change that perspective on any form of failure. So when I got those first set of results, and uh, I assure you, if I only had those first set of results with my 10% and 25%, I'm pretty sure Fullnet would not have asked me to come back. They didn't, they didn't define me. What defined me was they're the starting point, not the end point. They're the basis on which I will start. And I, I, I was laughed at by fellow students because when I got the results, I said, Who's the, who, who comes top in school? I still remember this. And actually, one of the kids I said it to, he's now a client of mine, an ex-Fullnet student. And I said to him, who, who comes top in the exams? And they pointed out um, one particular chap. And I said, I'm going to come top. And they laughed at me. And they were right, because in the next set of exams, I did. And the ones after that. And the ones after that. It took three years. Okay. My point is, you make the decision. When I got those first set of results, I called up my parents. Um, because by the time the exam results, the first term had finished, my parents had come back to the UK. And I said to them, bring some exercise books. Uh, I want to start revising for the next set of exams. You don't have to be that driven. You don't have to be that crazy. But whatever it is, if you want it and you want it badly enough, pursue it wholeheartedly. Put your mind and soul into it. It is worth it. To this day, when I call my aunt from the top of a mountain in Bali or uh, if from uh, a holiday in Malaysia or wherever else, <laughs> we have a little custom. She'll say to me, all those late nights were worth it. They were. When you have all of that, and, and by the way, it's worth it when it's self-made. There was no inheritance. There was no silver spoon. None of that. It, it really is worth it when it's self-made. So do it for that. Do not be afraid of the failures, the risks, the doubts, the criticisms. Do not think for a moment that just because somebody shows you pictures of them working with governments and I don't know, flying around the world, whatever you might see as success, whatever I might define as success and you might not, do not think for a moment that that 10% you see, the tip of the iceberg, does not have under it 90% of failure, of sacrifice, of tears. It does. It's worth it. It is always worth it. There's a saying from a boxer, an old American boxer, when you win, nothing hurts. And it was a saying which I remembered from my full neck days, because it was one of the things that got me through. I'm a traditionalist, not just because I'm old. I believe character matters. I know school teaches you this already. So forgive me if I'm repeating it. 
I know teachers say it, and I know when we're at school, we sometimes sort of, we listen to things, but we're not really understanding them. And as you get older, you appreciate these things become even more important. It's not just, oh God, yeah, miss. Oh yeah, sir, great. Seriously, these things will matter. They will make the difference in your life and character is one of them. It will also matter because whoever you are, wherever you're from, you will always be representing somebody. You might be representing your family. You might be representing your ethnicity. You might be representing your nationality. You might be representing your, your country, but you will always be representing someone and your character will define how they see, not just you, that won't matter so much, but how they will see the broader community you represent. And that puts a burden on you. That puts a, a, a slight weight on your shoulders and you might say, but, but we're, we're just children, that's not fair. No, I think it's immensely fair because I was in your position and it was fair then and it must be fair now. Plus, plus, let's not forget, you're one of the best schools in the UK. You know this, I'm not lecturing you, but the immense privilege, what really motivated me to study at Full Neck was a trip to India where, uh, where uh, I went out one evening with my folks and there was a flickering light bulb and we were walking through, we could see through the light bulb, this child working under this light. And I said to my parents, he's working a bit late. And then we walked on and there was another one and another one and another one and another one. We know now, 30, 40 years later, the massive competition from around the world for the jobs you're gonna go for, the things you wanna achieve. In my day, we didn't have global competition. I should have seen it coming because if there's kids working on their studies at 10 at night under flickering light bulbs, which are barely working and barely light up their books, then they're hungry. And we should, none of us, whether it's you or me tomorrow when I am working, should be more deserving of all we have than they are. It's as simple as that because we're privileged. We are incredibly privileged. We've already won the lottery. Leadership. It's not too young for you to hear about leadership because I know, I mean, you've got six formers. You get head boys, head girls, senior prefects. Whilst it is the art of getting somebody else to, uh, to do uh, something you want, there's more to it than that. Think about it now. Think about the kind of person you want to be, the leader you want to be. There is no excuse for everybody not being a leader in a particular way. Form those thoughts at school. Think about it, plan it, practice it. Those things will count tenfold when you're older and busy and commuting and in a job and looking after uh, 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 families and all the rest of it. Now you've actually got time to think of these things. Please do plan and think of those. I know I did when I was at school. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more and become more, you're a leader. It's as simple as that. I was fortunate, my country asked me yesterday, the UK government asked me yesterday to give a talk to our embassy in Colombia. And I told them, of course I'll do it. And it was this time yesterday. They said, why do you always say yes? I said, I'm asked by the UK government to do it. Why would I not say yes? But those privileges, those elements of fulfillment, which is what's important in life, I know you'll think possibly money is, maybe you'll think fame is. Actually, that fulfillment, that fulfillment, that's a rare thing to get. And the earlier you realize that, and the easier it is to be fulfilled from helping others to be inspired, the happier your life will be. Uh, and I speak with some experience and authority on that. Visit this place. These are the memorial gates outside of Buckingham Palace. They commemorate the sacrifice of Commonwealth soldiers in the First and Second World Wars. I know Full Neck teaches you about the history of the two world wars. Visit this place. In that dome, you will see people who won the George Cross and the Victoria Cross. You will know the Victoria Cross is given for courage in the face of the enemy which goes above and beyond the call of duty. Learn about these places, visit this place. It's your history as well. It's made you, it's made this country. It will inspire you. It will 
lead you to do greater things. It will give you a different perspective, a perspective of purpose in life. And it is that purpose which will lead to fulfillment, which will lead to happiness. Other things, I want you to learn to communicate. I want you to learn to debate. I want you to learn the art of rhetoric, the ancient Roman art, Greek art of rhetoric. I was the shyest boy at school. I think the first time I spoke to a girl was in the girls' school in my lower sixth. Um, I mean, I've spoken to a girl on and off, obviously, you know, family gatherings and stuff, but at school, it was in my lower sixth. Shyest boy at school, but I wanted to be a barrister, so I had a problem to be able to do that. I looked up on, in those days, we had something called the Yellow Pages. Think of it like a printed internet. I'm sure you know what the Yellow Pages is. Anyway, I looked in the Yellow Pages and I found uh, somebody who gave elocution lessons, speaking lessons. And I learned and I practiced and I read speeches of people and I practiced those. I'm very fortunate now that I get to go around the world, not just giving speeches, but actually then being able to implement them, learn about how to hold meetings, how to chair meetings. But please learn about aspects of rhetoric and charisma. These are important. They will allow you to show your true skills and your abilities and flourish. Learn to write. Again, whilst I was at Full Neck, I had a, I had a gift from an uncle and it was a little book. And at the back of the book, it's a book on calligraphy, but at the back it said, the pen is mightier than the sword. And it's true. Learn to write. I never anticipated I would become a columnist at the Financial Times. The immense power that writing will give, again, it will magnify your skills and your abilities and your talents. The hours you will work will be magnified manifold because you've got the ability to write or the ability to speak. Those two things will allow you to thrive in life. And if you use them directed to a bigger purpose than yourselves, again, you'll be fulfilled and fulfillment will bring you happiness. There is a debt of honor. I won't labor the point, I've touched upon it. I would sit at the top of the stairs at my, uh, at my house when I was a child at Full Neck, listening to my family downstairs, trying to work out how they're gonna make the fees. They didn't know how they would make the fees. I didn't dare ask them, and I'd be worried when I'd go to school that anytime there was a knock in the classroom door, that the headmaster's gonna walk in and say, you Patel, your parents haven't paid the fees, out. Of course that doesn't happen. God bless the school. Of course that doesn't happen. But I didn't know. A, 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 a colleague of mine in government had asked me, he said, he was in a room next to me, we were in India or China. I, I cover these territories for the government when I look for these technologies. And he said to me, I overheard you about four in the morning. He said, I got up and I could hear you in the room shouting at somebody. You were on a call. I said, I was calling the US. He goes, why do you work so hard? That's the reason, the debt of honor you will owe your parents who are paying the fees. Um, as I keep telling my three-year-old son, money doesn't grow on trees, he's too young to understand it. He actually does literally think it grows on trees, uh, uh, but he's only three. There is a debt of honor. I'm sorry, you're privileged. Well, I'm not sorry, but you know what I'm saying. You are in the top, and I know the point gets labored probably by your parents and your school teachers, and you're probably fed up of hearing it. I don't care. I don't care because... You look at what's happening in the world and you think, God, we're privileged. There is that debt of honor. But please have that humility with your good fortune. Uh, trust a toilet cleaner. I was, by the way, the best toilet cleaner. To this day, I probably could out clean any. Whatever you do in life. My dad used to say to me when I was, again, I was before I went to fall, he said, you better work hard because otherwise all you'll do is either clean toilets or fill up bags of potatoes. I don't know why he said bags of potatoes, but anyway. And of course, being the arrogant young man I was at 12 or child I was at 12, I said to him, well, if that's the case, I'll be the best damn toilet cleaner you've ever seen. Uh, keep your humility, uh, not just as children, but please as adults, God knows. The adults are probably not good role models in the world. Certainly the political adults are not. Uh, keep your humility, it will take you so much further. Uh, I, uh, th this one is for the girls more than the boys. I wrote a book with my sister. On entrepreneurship and during that I did a lot of research on which has been done on the difference between men and women 
Men tend to be more overconfident. By the way, the reason it mentions trading is because I run a hedge fund as well. I set up a hedge fund with the private equity fund in 2004. Uh, men tend to be more overconfident. Men, there's ample research to prove it. Women do not make it so easy for us, for us to shine, for us to take the role which was rightfully yours, for us to take center stage when it should have been you because you're better, you're more qualified, you're more able. We'll do it. Why wouldn't we? The research shows it happens time and time again. If you give a man and a woman the same work to do, and this is what the research shows, a man will say that work was worth more, a woman will say it was worth less. That's not right. There is more bluster which will come out of men, the research proves it, uh, than women. And I've my, my tutor at Oxford told me the same problem. He found it, he said the, the, he said the men were, were so often uh, had a shallower understanding of the subject matter. The women knew more, but the men were getting better grades. They were able to talk them way into things women do not. And like I said, I wrote the book on it, so I hopefully speak with some authority. Uh, do not let somebody steal your thunder, your light, uh, and fight for it. Fight for shining your abilities. One phrase which has got me through a heck of a lot through life, and like I said, all life isn't simple. Um, uh, the, the, you don't need to worry about the, there's a lecture I give each year at Oxford University on leadership and, and faith. So don't worry about the image, but the phrase, this too shall pass. Are we okay for time for me to give the little anecdote about this, Ethan? Yeah. There's, there's a story of King Solomon, the wisest king there had ever been. And he had a prime minister who he felt was taking away power from him. So the king set the prime minister a task, which he thought this will, this will humiliate the prime minister because he won't be able to do the task and it will put him in his place. He's getting too big for his boots. So he said to the prime minister, I hear there is a ring in my kingdom, which if anybody looks at this ring, it makes a sad man happy and a happy man sad. Go find me this ring. Now, King Solomon knew this ring did not exist. So he sent the prime minister on this fool's errand. And for 30 days, the prime minister went to the four corners of the kingdom looking for this ring. And then on the 30th day, he returned to the gates of the palace to admit defeat and be humiliated by King Solomon. And as he was about to enter, he saw a market stall and he could hear a metal basher bashing away at a ring. And he said to him, he said, have you heard of this ring which makes a sad man happy when he looks at it and a happy man sad? And the, the metal uh, 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 welder said, yes, I have, I have one. And the Prime Minister couldn't believe his luck. He said, really, please, please get it. So the man, the metal welder went to the back and the, the Prime Minister could hear him bashing away and he's thinking, oh God, he's going to make something up and give it to me. And the, the man came out and gave it to the prime minister and the prime minister looked at it and the inscription within it. And the prime minister smiled. He went from sadness to happiness. And he said, you're right, this is the ring. And he took it to King Solomon. King Solomon said, so you have failed. The prime minister said, no, I have the ring. And Solomon was shocked because he knew the ring didn't exist. So what possible thing could the prime minister be bringing him? And he gave the ring to Solomon who looked at it and King Solomon smiled and said, you're right, this is the ring. And do you know the inscription within that ring on the inside of it? The inscription said, and this too shall come to pass. Remember that in your darkest hours, and I'm sorry to say, and God willing, you will never have them, but I'm sorry to say life happens when you're grown up and they will come about. And when they do remember, and this too shall come to pass. And when you have your happiest moments, please enjoy them and cherish them and celebrate those victories because tomorrow you're back to work. So do take time to celebrate those because sadly, those two will come to pass. So make sure you enjoy the triumphs as well. A few more moments, if I may. I want you to remember these two things. In an age of social media, on the age of so much noise in our minds, remember the quote from Churchill. There's nothing wrong with just being quiet and stepping back from it. 
But also, remember this from Mahatma Gandhi, and you might think an odd combination, Churchill and Gandhi, if you know your history, you'll know why I think in an odd, or I might think in an odd combination. Do have that focus, do have that strength, that character uh, to get to where you want to go to. Something more, more young, uh, Will Smith. When you're setting a plan and you think, oh, I can't be bothered, I can't be bothered getting out of bed, I can't be bothered, you know, I'm not excited. Make the goal bigger until you are excited. Usually it gets, the bigger the goal, the more excited you'll be. The problem often isn't you. It's the goal isn't big enough. The purpose isn't big enough. Make it bigger and bigger and bigger until you are excited. The government had asked me to find these technology companies and bring them to the UK. And I could so easily have said, mm, yeah, great, well, I want to do that. Or I could have said, no, what I'm doing is trying to solve through these companies some of the world's biggest problems. It's the same issue. And there's a, there's a quick story I'll give you of, of the, three, the, the three stone cutters. I don't know if you know the story, the three stone cutters. And a man came along, he saw three stone cutters. They were, they were banging away on one brick. And, they were, uh, and he said to the first man, what are you doing? And he said, oh, I'm bashing these bricks so I can make a, a, a cathedral. And he asked the second guy, he goes, well, what I'm trying to do is chisel this so this becomes a very beautiful cathedral. They're all working on the same project. And he asked the third man, what are you doing? And he said, I'm building something which will be so beautiful, it will last the ages and people will write about it for centuries. They're all doing the same job. They're all stone cutters, making a cathedral. One had the bigger purpose. He knew a bigger picture, a bigger perspective, the same job. And this will happen to you in whatever work you do in life. You might even be prime ministers or Nobel Prize winners. And you'll think, oh, what a rubbish job. Got people criticize me all the day. Or you may look at it as, I have some incredibly important work I am doing, or at school, I'm setting the foundations for my future success and my life will be that much easier, that much happier, that much more meaningful because of what I am doing each and every single day. And I'm forming through these years, the character which will make all of those things happen. That's important. Just quickly in closing, Steve Jobs, stay hungry, stay foolish. I know I keep talking about the more serious things and my wife criticizes me for it. Read the biographies of great lives, read the speeches of great people, read quotes, poems, which will inspire you. Learn about Noor Inayat Khan, a British woman, a British Indian woman in the Second World War, probably the bravest of all women in the Second World War. Uh, captured and tortured by the Nazis, never gave up the secrets. You're here because of her. I'm here in this wonderful country because of her. Learn about people like that. You already know about Nelson Mandela. The greatest glory in living lies not never in falling, but rising every time we fall. Don't just read them. Feel it. Know it. Honestly, the things that get shaped now in your formative school years, they will be so much easier to call upon than 10 years from now, than 20 years from now, if you delay. Okay? Everything really is a miracle. Have wonderment, have awe. It's so easy to be cynical. I, I know, I was a school kid. Everything, it's so easy to be cynical. Don't be that, don't be that. Have wonderment and awe at every subject. Every subject, I know it sounds like, yeah, well, you were a geek, I'll bet you. Of course you have awe and wonderment at the beauty and artistry of maths, you geek. It is a miracle, all of it. Uh, and when you see it as such, it bec life becomes one, even more wonderful as a result. Focus. You're talented, you're privileged. You will be like kids in a sweet shop. There'll be so many opportunities open to you to be able to do so much. If your parents are wealthy, you'll be able to travel the world that much sooner, have more opportunities as a result. If they're not, you will still have immense opportunities. But that means focus. It means saying no to more things than others. My dearest friend left school at 16. He didn't go to university. Uh, he's, an he's an unlikely friend of mine because I was a, a fellow at Oxford University, the exact opposite of somebody who might leave school at 16. He is my dearest, closest friend because he had fewer opportunities and the ones he focused on made him immensely successful. And I mean, as a philanthropist, as somebody who donates to the causes I tell him to donate to. Uh, it was amazing at everything he did because he had a narrow field, fewer choices. Uh, those that we might think uh, are not as privileged as lucky as us, 
actually that narrowing of field often lets them get further ahead. Just two more slides. Again, Steve Jobs, I'm in business, so I would, of course, love everything he says. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking, don't settle. The woman who's my wife, I met actually as a mentor, and I told her, don't settle. Don't settle. Whatever you do in life, don't settle. Whether it's finding a life partner or your work or anything else, don't settle. Don't look down and say, nah, this will do. Nah, this is all right. Okay. You're better than that. You should be more worthy than that. You will have more self-respect than that. Whatever you do, don't settle. And finally, I close with a reminder. Yes, you're not just as children, but always have that inner child. Uh, don't forget to have fun. Always have that inner child. When I, in a moment, go play with my three-year-old son, uh, honestly, I'm on the same intellectual level as him. Uh, when we're making the trains go around the train track, D do remember to have fun despite all the serious things I've said. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. What an inspirational talk. Thank you so much, Alpesh, for for those last 40 minutes. That was really superb. I'm sure we will have some questions. Before we go move on to questions, I would like just to introduce the new head of school, Mr. Taylor. I can see him in the corner of my screen here. So Mr. Taylor, there is Alpesh Patel, former um, full next school students, have you may have figured out? Hi, Alpesh. Uh, we've communicated before, actually, um, yeah. and Alpesh received his honour earlier in the year, so we do vaguely know each other. But I, I was about 15 minutes late. I'm so pleased to see that Carolyn has recorded this so that I can catch the beginning. And, and my Thanks. daughter, Megan's here as well, so she'll be able to tell me about it later. But it just was so up my street, Alpesh. It's unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. What, is it, are we called, uh, headmasters called headmaster nowadays or principal? I'm a, I'm a principal, but I think it's the same thing. <laughs> Thank you, principal. <laughs> Mr. Kernahan sends his very best regards. Oh, please do give him my regards whenever you uh, speak to him next. Certainly he was my do. geography teacher, a wonderful uh -huh. teacher before he became headmaster. So very, and, and very caring. I mean, I have to say all the teachers from my, my, my time at Full Net, they had a, there was this care um, under that umbrella you thrive. You have the potential to thrive. My fellow schoolmates, I might have had an odd, you know, like everybody does at school, you know, God, don't like that one. He's okay. He's not, you know, all the rest. But teachers, um, you could tell there was a sense of, um, a, a, a sense of, well, trusteeship, care. Yeah. Uh, and when you look back on it, you think, my God, I was lucky to have that. So, um, and I'm sure the school has the same ethos now. I'm, I'm certain of it. So I hope that never changes. Yeah, I'm, I'm very Now, lucky. one of the great things about these students, Alpesh, is the questions that yeah, they sorry. ask. So I don't want to take up any more time. If I got a chance for a chat at the end, maybe that would be lovely. But Yes, yes, of course. Okay, speak so later. You, Thank you. On the questions to the floor then. If you would like to ask a question, all you have to do is mute yourself. If you don't dare, muting yourself and talking, which you should now, um, just, just put it on chat and I'll read it. But I'm sure you can do this. Go for it. Any questions? Hi, it's Izzy from Year 10. Um, out of all the things you said, because there was a lot there, which was all good, what was what would be the one thing you'd say to take to like take away from it? That's a great question, actually. Uh, finding a purpose, but I think you know I didn't have a pur a bigger purpose when I was at school. Um, so I'd say in later life, so to put this in your pocket for now, for sort of like five years from now or 10 years from now, finding that bigger purpose of why you're doing things, that perspective of actually I'm doing important, fulfilling work. When I was at school, uh, it was determination and focus and having that end goal and nothing's going to stop me and having that drive to the point I was certain, yes, I will get the grades I want. I will get to the destination I want of course there were roadblocks I didn't get everything that I wanted after school I didn't it didn't come in a straight line it never does there were like I said 100 rejection letters but it was just that determination that yeah you can put an obstacle in my way I'm expecting obstacles I will fall and stumble doesn't matter I think it was that sense doesn't matter thank you 
Great question, Easy. Another question. I'll take the, the question if that's not too greedy. Um, Alpesh, earlier in the talk, you mentioned about success and that we each need to find our own success. What is success to you? Um, I think, and it varies across ages, of course. When you're in your 20s, uh, success becomes monetary. You know, it becomes the thing you haven't got. Success always becomes the thing you haven't gotten, you know. And then as you get older and you save a bit of money and all the rest of it, then it's not so much the money, which is as important as doing something meaningful uh, and doing it for others. Uh, uh, there, there's um, the, the story of the, 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 the survivor from the Nazi camps who um, wrote the book uh, Man's Search for Meaning and uh, Frankel. And he, he I, 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 and it relates to this, which is, in a sense, all of us, and, and I didn't have this at school, and I don't expect anybody in their school years to have this, it, it, but grown-ups more, and you will get it, it will hit you, is actually we just all want to feel important, that what we're doing matters. Mm -hmm. And the older you get, the more important that becomes. And, and I think, um, uh, uh, bless the teachers, because... It's self-evident, teachers, doctors, you know, firefighters, what they're doing is important, it's easy for them. But the downside of being in finance, that's not obvious. Why it matters, shuffling paper, why it matters. And so it's harder to find it there uh, than elsewhere. But yeah, look for that, that uh, meaning. And, and you reminded me of Frankel, if I can give one quick story of that. There was the man in the concentration camp who was kneeling down and praying and the, 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 the Nazi soldier came up to him and laughed at him and he said, why are you praying? You're in a concentration camp, you will die in the morning. What have you, your God is dead. What do you have to pray for? And he looked up at the, the, the soldier and he said, I'm praying because I am grateful. What do you have to be grateful for? And he said that God did not make me like you. There will be, wherever you are, find that meaning in anything and everything you do. Do look at, um, I think it's Viktor Frankl's book. Uh, <laughs> uh, the teachers will correct me. Some of you might be a bit young to, well, maybe you're not, you know, to, to know about um, uh, those horrors. But um, it's an important lesson in life. It's Thank you, Alpesh. Really I've got one question on the chat. What did you learn from your time at university? Uh, law, philosophy, politics, and economics, but I don't think that's what you're asking. <laughs> um, uh, uh, what did I learn? Uh, I guess, actually, more of what I'd said there. Uh, yeah, I, it was really the, the things that I've already mentioned. Uh, there is an element of, of human nature, which is that we, we, they say that, that there was a study done where they interviewed people in, in care homes towards the end of their lives. And they asked them, what's the secret of life? What advice would you give your younger self? And every single one of them said in this study, and I don't know whether it's just a, 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 one of those social myths, but I don't think it is because I've seen reports since. They said, actually minimize your regrets and try to have fewer of them um, in life. Whatever those regrets might be, it might be a life partner, it might be a job or a career. Think in terms of, if I'm on my deathbed, will I regret this? So to some extent, funnily enough, at university, I guess part of what I had learned is sometimes I wish I worked less. You know, I wish uh, I worked more smartly. I wish I learned the art of learning. I had it at school, but at university, I wasn't as good as I was at school. And I wish I learned it sooner and, and, and was better at it and more efficient and more productive uh, as I was at school. Because once I learned the art of learning at school, I could excel in exams. I, it was a different set at university. So there was that. And um, I guess I regret to some extent, I, I worked in the US Congress when I was at university and we were doing incredible work, um, uh, important work. And, and I, I guess I, I made even more of all of that and the opportunities which were put before me. And I regret that I haven't always made the most of all the opportunities which have been put before me. 
Uh, and there's an old poem I used to read. I'm not going to read it out because I haven't even memorized it. When I was at school, when I was at Full Neck and I had a book and the front of it, and it's a poem called Opportunity. And it's by Machiavelli, who you'll have heard of, but it's a beautiful poem. And, and I'd suggest to all the students, and I was reading it since I was 13 and kept reading and I still have it. Uh, and in it, 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 it uh, he's speaking to Opportunity. And he asks her, who's that by your side? And Opportunity turns to him and says, well, you've spent much time speaking to me about your dreams and your plans, and you've not noticed who's by my side. Her name is Penitence or Regret. And if you let me go, I, if you let Opportunity go, she will be your bride. I guess that's something which I remember from my full neck days, and it's, it's uh, try and minimize your regrets in life. Uh, and... Um, uh, uh, yeah, I guess that's what I learned at university and I sort of regret that I did let a lot of opportunities sort of slip, slip through my fingers. Thank you for this. Thank you for your answer, Alpesh. Thank you for the questions, Sam. Any other questions then? Yes, I'll go. If, oh, sorry. Sorry, you can go first. <laughs> Alex so, hello, it's Alexander from Year 5. Would Hi. you say that Winning first try or falling down and getting back up and winning is the best way to learn? Uh, it's a brilliant question. I remember once my uncle was driving me up to school and I said to him, if you have a choice, um, the easy way or the hard way, which would you choose? Because I had a decision to make when I was at school along those two lines uh, when I was in the sixth form. Uh, and it involved a girl and you can imagine, I've already mentioned I had this shyness about me. So you can imagine you know, this, um, uh, uh, this whole sort of, th 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 honestly, when I, was at, when I was at Full Net, girls were far more difficult to work out than calculus, okay? Um, and the easy way or the hard way, watch if you've got that choice. And he said to me, without knowing the details, he said the hard way, he goes, I've always learned more by doing things by taking the harder path or the path less trod. So I would say to, in answer to your question, uh, whilst I wouldn't seek out failure just for educational purposes, I would seek out success. I'm not, a, uh, I'm not crazy, uh, but there is a, a way to look at failure as that's fine. It's the old Edison quote you'll have heard of, a uh, hundred failures in making a light bulb. He said, that's not failure. I just found a hundred ways in which not to make a light bulb. And that perspective is incredibly important in life. Uh, my CV on LinkedIn shows the successes. The reason for that is if I put my failures up, there isn't enough space on the internet for those. Okay, so I assure you and everybody I've ever met, it's the same story. The, the, the failures are many. They just don't let, they don't uh, 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 get you down. It's as simple as that. And, and similarly, the difference between the winner and the loser, honestly, it is that thin. It is that thin. It is that the winner just does one more try. That's all it is. We then have a question from Paulina and then I've got a question on the chat for you then. Hi, thank you for your amazing talk. I was just wondering what one piece of advice you would give for, to someone who wants to become better a public speaker and presenter? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I was the shyest boy at school. Nobody ever believes it. They think, no, 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 it can't be the case. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm fortunate, like I said, I, I, I get flown around the world to talk. I mean, we'll keep it a little secret between ourselves, but can you imagine what a gig? Get flown around the world to talk. I mean, I get flown around to do more than talk, thankfully. Otherwise, it'd be a pretty empty existence. But it's a pretty great gig. Um, uh, I got a message today. I'm going to name drop. I got a message today from one of our government departments. They want me to accompany the prime minister when he visits India. That's a privilege. And I'm name dropping. Um, that's a huge privilege. Um, because they want me to talk at the events. Uh, and host him, et cetera, et cetera. What an immense privilege. For me, pr I practiced in a room with nobody there. And I took a speech from, let's say, Abraham Lincoln or a speech from Winston Churchill. And I just rehearsed it. I actually, because people could hear me in the other room and I didn't want them to think I was, you know, a bit odd. Well, more odd than they might have thought. So my family might have thought. I'd sort of, I'd whisper it. And first I'd just read it and then I'd practice as if I was them and sort of, you know, bit of table thumping, work out crescendos, learn about rhetoric, uh, learn about what 
makes a great speech? Why does it evoke emotion? Now I write articles and I write articles on, on, they might be on politics, they might be on religion, they might be on all sorts of things. When I'm on TV, I've got to be able to get that phrase out, which will convince somebody on the other side. I've done Newsnight with Paxman, I think there's a picture somewhere there over my shoulder. Um, those skills will help you. Uh, if there's a secret to success, public speaking, getting on a stage is, is right up there because you can have two people, identical twins, the one who's on stage will always be perceived as, you know, it might be wrong, but they're always perceived as cleverer, better, worth knowing, more worthy of elevation. They'll get the bigger gigs and they'll be uh, promoted, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, my wife messaged me today, by the way, and I want to talk about the women male difference. And she said to me, can you help me um, get my profile up? And I'm thinking, well, I've been saying for ages, and she always says to me, well, I'm not you. I said, no, I understand that, and I empathize with that. I don't know why. Well, look, the research shows it. In fact, I think I do know why, and the research shows it, so I'm, I'm not paying to biases, but men are more, uh, they're going to be the ones to sucking up the oxygen in a room, I'm afraid, time and time again, okay? So it's even more important if, like my wife, you're incredibly talented that you do raise that profile and learn speaking. And for me, like I said, it was that. In fact, I was so bad and so worried, I took elocution lessons from a, from a, a speech trainer. It was actually, a, I don't even think it was an elocution teacher. I think it was a speech and drama teacher. And the other thing he told me when I, so I was still at full neck when I was doing this. And he said to me uh, uh, something which still stays with me to this day. And it's another secret, which is so important. And I might not have conveyed this in this talk, and I hope I have, likability. Likeability beyond just academic ability will actually help you get further ahead. You don't want to fake it. Authenticity is important. But actually, it's really important to be in a room where you give energy. You don't suck it up. You are likable. People want to be around likable people. Of course, you'll need talent, but it'll also help you get further ahead. So there's the hard skills and the soft skills. Learn those. The, honestly, the more you learn when you're at school, it counts for tenfold when you're older so when you're older if i say to my wife all of this she goes oh, i've got time i i know because i can see on my screen i've got a whatsapp from her which says pick up raspberries blackberries mangoes avocados lemons pesto uh olive oil i mean sorry i'm just thinking when i read that if somebody watches this on the internet i think god how middle class could you be uh but you get my point nobody's got time anymore do it when you're at school, learn those things. Honestly, they will act, it's like a superpower. It will accelerate you so much more than if you try and do it when you're older. Uh, thank you for your answer. I think I've got one last question or actually two questions for, from Eliza. So Eliza, why don't you do it then? Uh, hi, I was just going to ask you, how did you decide what you wanted to do in your life and what advice would you give to people who are unsure on what they want to do? Thank you, Eliza, brilliant question. Um, my, my uncle suggested when I was about 12 years old, I might want to be a barrister. And I chose it because it was uh, for two reasons. One, it was a very prestigious occupation. And that mattered to me. It might not matter to other people, in which case don't do it. It wasn't because I thought to myself, oh, I'm really argumentative or, and, uh, or, and such like, or I want to, but, you know, public speaking petrified me, which was another reason I wanted to do it. I always went for things which were very difficult for me personally to do. So... That was one reason for being embarrassed. The other thing is because people in the 80s, uh, when I made the decision, said it's the last bastion of institutional racism. And so I thought to myself, right, that's for me then. Definitely want to go there and annoy a load of people. Um, uh, I didn't. I don't think I experienced it, but you can't tell. Uh, but yeah, that's how I chose uh, being a barrister. And then when I got there, I realized when I was practicing that actually this isn't my passion because I was spending more time, I'd, I'd sort of work out the case uh, uh, and then I think to myself, oh, I'm just going to call the stockbroker and buy some options on uh, uh, whatever stock I was trading and investing. Because so I started investing when I was 12 years old. My aunt, when I was at Full Neck, as I said, we, we didn't have much money. So she gave me a hundred pounds. I said, to her, can I have a hundred pounds? Um, I want to try and do something for the family when I was at school. And she lent me a hundred pounds, what she gave me a hundred pounds. And I bought some stock and got into investing uh, that way. And my family doesn't come from any kind of background to do anything with investing or law or nothing. There was no sort of doors open for me or anything like that. They were just hardworking, regular people. And uh, uh, so 
that then got me into finance. My uncle had bought me a computer when I was nine. I loved it. Uh, so it was those things where it was the passion that has led to what I've ended up doing. It wasn't the, oh, I think I should be a barrister. It was, wow, I really love investing. Um, and of course, naturally what happens, you end up with an investment company. You become, uh, uh, you own an asset management company. You, uh, uh, I discovered that I really enjoyed writing and I was quite good at it as well. You know, if you enjoy it and you're good at it and you can make money from it, you're laughing in anything in life. Do you enjoy it? Are you good at it? Can you make money from it? If you get all three, you've hit the jackpot. Uh, so for me, with writing, that happened. And I wrote uh, several books and then uh, wrote a column in the FT, started presenting on TV because I discovered, oh, actually, I'm not as shy as I thought, and I'm not too bad on. Uh, and, and so there was a large element of luck, but it, it sort of came about through those elements. There was a lot of chance, which is what do I really enjoy? And could it lead to a career? Uh, but obviously, it started off with, the conveyor belt, obviously it would, which is what does one do? One goes into a career, which is law, medicine, or pharmacy, or whatever else it might be. Um, but have that sort of plan B, plan C, that, yeah, I might learn law, but maybe one day I'll set up my own business. You know, I'll, I'll sort of earn the income, get the professional qualification, and they matter a lot. They give a lot of credibility that I'm a barrister, uh, a lot of credibility, and it's useful. Uh, so I'm a believer in those professional qualifications before you go off to do other things. But now people don't have careers, they have jobs. So, you know, you move around and more and more people are going to go into uh, business. So, it, yeah, that passion led thing, I think, is happening increasingly uh, that people are saying, well, I want purpose. I want passion. I don't want the sal salary so much you, know, you need to, to live on. So, yeah, focus on the passion bit as well as just what might I like and work experience helps. To, to determine whether you might like something or not. Thank you so much for your time and for this energy that just radiates from this talk, Alpesh. That was really just really um, so inspiring. And um, I think I'm gonna go back to school now it's that simple. <laughs> so as it is already seven o'clock, and I know that we want to respect your time, I say thank you to all of our participants. We will stay behind if you can spare us a few more minutes. Sure, of course. If anybody would have any more questions. But thank you to all the participants. Thank you for coming. Stay safe and look forward to seeing you in school for real next week. I just can't wait. See you soon then. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. And we'll stay behind if you have sure. any more questions. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is always quite difficult to, um, to give a speech when you have so many blank squares and and I know that as a speaker you probably need that interaction with people you need people looking at you that's what we've been missing so much over the last few months so thank you so much that was my really, pleasure really amazing. Amazing. I've just said to oh, Megan that every nugget gold dust there Alpesh oh thank you so much it thank really you. was no, um, it's, a, it's a privilege to be asked back to school um, and, you know, to be to, to be able to share um, because, you know, you do feel in a privileged position to be able to, you know, make, makes me feel special. Let's just put it that way. So um, it, honestly, you've done me a great honour um, by by asking me and um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm feeling very fortunate, even more fortunate than I normally feel. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. And you sat in their seat, but it's really important that they know you, that you sat in their seat. And yeah. from wherever they happen to be at the moment, yeah, and it, it might, might be in law or finance, it might be in medicine, it might be in art, I, I don't really care. But the yeah. fact that they have role models who've been in their seat, sat in that yeah. same seat in the church, you know, whatever, is yeah. so important. Yeah, yeah. No, it's... it's um... I know from my school days, and you'll know from your school days, it's, it's always a bit harder to relate because you think that's an old person. Yeah, you know, I don't know. There's a barrier we put, don't we? And we just think, yeah. And, 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 and I don't know. You think you're always going to be young forever and all the rest of it. But I also know from when I spoke at speech day oh, about 15 years ago or something, 17 okay. years ago, um, that from 
there'll be a few students with whom it really resonates because they yeah. came up to me. Um, and, and, and that's it. As, as you, again, as you know, as teachers, it, 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 you're just looking to light the torch paper on one or two and, and that's it. Um, and it's a privilege to be able to do it. So sort of my, my, my opportunity to, to be a teacher for, a, for, a, for an hour. So. <laughs> yeah. and, and when this is all over, Alpesh, uh, 15 years is a, is a long time to go between speech days, but... <laughs> <laughs> don't be surprised if you find an invitation i'd be honored no i'd be honored i do visit school though um uh -huh. just because you know walk along full neck and i i i came to the um the, the sort of the alumni summers um open summer kind of house about three four years ago so it was nice because um mrs edward was there um and a few of the old teachers were there so that was yeah. it was really nice and you walk around school and obviously find fond memories and, and reminisce. Um, the older I get, the more I find myself reminiscing. <laughs> <laughs> Often about the things that you've learnt. Uh, it, yeah. it was really interesting what you were saying about, you know, the things that you've learnt the hard way. I think anything that you find easy isn't actually that rewarding. It's the things that have taken you so much time and effort and yeah. fail and, and try again. They're the things that we get more satisfaction out of, aren't they? No, absolutely. It's funny. I was having exact same question. Uh, sorry, exact same conversation with my wife yesterday, and she said, "Why?" Is, I can't remember what she was talking about. Something she said was really difficult, and I said, "Ekta, you wouldn't value it if it wasn't." I mean, you know, we can all choose mm -hmm. to sit on the sofa and have an easy life, but it, it, it's not going to be a value to you. you it's going to actually be spiral out of you know, quite depressing. Um, so yeah, it's 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 unfortunate that that's how the world works because in one sense got to do something hard in order to get the reward but then the reward feels uh, amazing which is why I wanted them to also to celebrate it because one of the things that I learned is yeah you know it, it's important to take a pause and celebrate the victories as well because um, too often you sort of move to the next thing and the next thing and, and, and you forget that sometimes the victories are few and far between you know as all things in life they get, they, you know they, there's a flood sometimes and, and there's a famine <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm conscious that there are three other people who stayed on Sam Ethan and Katie I don't want to dominate and, and you mustn't stay too much longer Alpesh but um, Sam Katie if you're there and, and Ethan is there anything that you wanted to ask no I just wanted uh, to thank you to your time uh, uh, Alpesh thank you been really interesting really really interesting thank you oh, so much is Di there as well mm -hmm. hi Di okay good evening Paul yes I am and it has been really interesting you know, we were looking forward to this meeting so much that we even tried logging onto it last week we were that excited <laughs> 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 seriously we were that excited it's always better to be too early <laughs> <laughs> we really enjoyed listening really enjoyed it Thank you so much. Both thank really you. enjoyed it. Thank, thank you. No, thank you. Ethan, were you going to ask a question? No, I was also just going to say thank you. It was an absolutely splendid talk and I just really found it extremely valuable. I find the motivational speakers often, uh, they really drive me to determination to pursue my goals. Yeah. Even if it's in a different area, Ethan, because obviously you're, you want to take your life in a completely different direction, to Alpesh, but actually in common, you've got those same values. It, it doesn't matter what you're aiming to achieve at the end of it, the same attitudes will, will get you there. And, 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 and we all need motivation. I mean, you know, I need motivation every day. You know, the, the, the not every day is like, wow, let's just go out and conquer the world. Yeah, there are days where, why is it so difficult? And, and, um, so to some extent, it doesn't change, but school helps because that's when, like I was saying, you, you really are formed. Um, and I, I, I'm surprised growing older how, you know, they say it's your formative years. I really understand why now. It really does uh, shape you so very much. So, yeah. Uh, could, could, I, could I ask, please, before, before we go, what is the most interesting, where is the most interesting place you've, uh, you, you've ever been in your travels? Or maybe oh, what's the most um, interesting you've ever had? Um, the, I missed the second part. What was the second part? Or, or maybe maybe the question is, what's the most interesting job you've ever had? Uh, so on the first part, the most interesting place 
Petra in Jordan. And again, it was one of those government trips from India. I took an indirect flight via Jordan uh, and took a couple of days to go to Petra. And you'll know Petra because um, uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah. But, you know, you see these, you, you see a lot of stuff on, on the internet and you think, and you turn up at these places and you think, because mm, yeah. uh, my wife asked me exactly the same question you've asked me uh, as well. She goes, you know, what, what, and I have to say, took my breath away. It really is gobsmackingly beautiful how they've carved this monument into the cave side. And, and even if you've got a, I don't know, thousand inch 4K TV, it will not do it justice. Uh, so I, I really recommend um, uh, a visit to Petra. So I guess that was uh, the most interesting place. I've been lucky. I've been to Kashmir, again, off the back of other trips. I was trying to do the fun with the work <laughs> for, 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 for the reasons I mentioned. Uh, I've uh, been to um, the Andaman Islands, which actually were quite a disappointment. I thought, you know, remote, just off the coast, coast of Burma. Actually, it's bit dull um, so yeah I, 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 I'd say uh, with Petra was was it I, I think in Kota Kinabalu in Borneo I did a 3 a.m hike with with someone you know my guide as it were up a, up a volcano that was pretty nuts uh, in the you know because it's dark and you've got to start that early to get the sunrise uh, again it was off the back of a trip you know, just made sure I did a bit of fun um most interesting job I guess it's my government role. Well, actually, no, no, tell a lie. I mean, the government role is great because um, of the reasons I mentioned in, in the talk, the huge privilege and, and working with these technology entrepreneurs. And, and you know, I, I get messages from them saying, oh, we managed to raise this much money and now we can, uh, uh, where, you know, there's a carbon capture technology company that I was working with, which take carbon out of the out of the air. I mean, it's pretty good, you know. Um, but I think that the most important job and, uh, and and it's still on my Facebook sort of banner. You know, in your banner, you put pictures. And I've said to myself, when I get something better than that, I'm going to change the banner. And and it's not, by the way, it's not fatherhood or something. You know, people probably expect me to say, oh, being a husband was the greatest job. And uh, my wife's not listening, so we're okay. Uh, it is a great job. And being a father is an immense job. But in terms of the conventional, uh, when I worked in the U.S. Congress, I was 20... Three again, uh, luck is you know just right place, right time. Um, so in '94, and we were I was working for a congressman called Elliot Engel, who only just retired this year uh, uh, as congressman, and we were lobbying the State Department and the White House, the Clinton White House, to have um, a certain country declared a terrorist state. Uh, this was seven years before 9/11, and 15 years after that. Uh, Osama bin Laden was found in that country. So we know we were on the right track. Um, we were lobbying them on the basis of, I mean, think about it. This is just, what, seven years after leaving Full Neck. So it's not that, you know, school days and the, the, the sort of lightheartedness of school, let's put it that way, and the grown-up world of terrorism and all the rest of it. Um, the, 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 the country also housed the nuclear proliferator, and we're trying to get that, to, we're trying to get the White House to understand that. I think that was probably the most important work I'd ever, ever, ever done. Um, as a result of that, I got to go, I got to go to that place. So you can imagine pretty, pretty sorry, I don't know if you can see it, but pretty, yeah. pretty impressive stuff you get to do when, as a lowly intern. Um, that was the most fascinating, but I couldn't replicate that. You know, people sometimes will look at my LinkedIn and says, wow, I want to do this, this, this. And I said, yeah, I want to do all of those things. I couldn't re replicate it. There's so much was luck and chance. I think being a TV presenter on Bloomberg was amazing because um, what happened, again, it was chance. I'd written a book and the global head of TV at Bloomberg happened to see my interview on CNN. I got a call on my birthday as it happens. And she said, would you like your own show? Who does that? Nobody does that. No, that never happens. Um, you can't replicate that. And it was the same day the Financial Times called me up and said, we're gonna give you a column. So you can imagine, I'm starting to think astrology has something to do with it because <laughs> it was on my birthday, as I say. Um, and that was, I was 29. I mean, that's nuts. I mean, to this day, I'm not kidding. Once a week, my wife will ask me, so what was it like? Because she didn't know me then. What was it like? You know, it must've been great and all the rest of it. And, and of course, you know, you, schools produce prime minister. So let's put it into context. You know, you're making me feel, you know, very self-important, but you know, there's proper TV 
people and there's proper um, columnists and all the rest of it. But uh, as somebody who sort of did it as a side gig, uh, th those were great roles um, because, uh, uh, I mean, to this day, I get people sort of, well, I had somebody last week sort of said, oh, I used to read your column and all of this. So it's great. I mean, all of that, but. So much. It's been. Thank a you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope to see you at some stage for a speech day in the next year, two years or so. It would be an honor. Yeah, it would it'd always be an honor. Thank you all so much.